Well, it's the next day and I was wondering to myself, what am I going to make a video of this morning? I got up out of bed and I looked down on here and it reminded me, oh, I got to finish this particular video where I clean the carpet. Now, can you see, I told you that simple green sometimes can leave a little residue. See this right in here? Can you see that? Right there. I can see it. It almost still looks dirty. It's not... It's just the residual and the residue of the simple green still on top of the carpet. And in lots of cases, like I said before, I would put this on carpet and depending on what color it is, most of the time I don't really have an issue. But if you, if you have an off-white carpet or a tan or something kind of like this, this color, you may have to go over it the next day. Okay, so here we are the next day and I'm just gonna put plain old water on it and I'm gonna kind of rinse it a little bit and all I'm gonna do is, is, is get some water on my brush and go over this area again See, just, just by picking it up with my brush and putting it on the carpet should be enough to kind of push that down between the fibers, get it off the top edge of the carpet. I didn't really feel I could do that when it was still working and cleaning from before. I was... I've only had to do this another time and it was actually in the same house downstairs. I had to do the same thing and it worked out really good. And I like using my Simple Green. I'm like, how can I make that better with my Simple Green? And this is how. I'm just going to do each little spot that I did before and I can see I can see right where they're at. See that's just pushing all that green residue down into the carpet and I'm fine with that. When that dries that's going to be a lot more better. And depending how much simple green you put on the first time, I might even have to do this again. You know, all the white that's coming up is still the suds from that top layer. You know? spots here that's why I know when I use my my carpet cleaner I'll get whatever else if it even slightly shows even if it doesn't once I get that out to do some other spots I'll come up here and go over this whole section and that's the ultimate, getting uh, a portable carpet cleaner for your house. Because you're always going to see different types of spills. You think, oh, I'll just whip out my carpet cleaner, no biggie. Don't get upset about somebody spilling something. Everything that generally falls down onto the carpet is not intentional, it's usually an accident. All, all I'm doing is blending everything in, pushing that sudsy stuff out. If 
I really wanted to, I guess I could get a cloth and blot up some of the suds, but you know, I'm not going to. Oh, there's one, one more little spot right there. Oh, it gives you arm a nice little workout. Jeez. Okay, that's all I'm going to do for there other than behind the door. I'm going to get behind the door too. And that's all going to look fine. Oh. I'm just, I wasn't even planning on doing this. I was really wanting to just clean the, uh, that floor mat in the kitchen. I'm going to show you that in a minute, what that looks like, because I didn't have to do anything like this, and I don't think I will either. That's all I'm going to do. That's going to dry. Run your vacuum over that. After it dries, it'll be fine. Now let's, let's go see in the kitchen. I'm not even going to bring my, my bucket of water because I don't think I need it. You can be the judge of this. the spot was before right in here and all up in there and I actually did some right in right in through there remember I didn't do the whole rug I could have done the whole rug but like I say the whole rug is is still pretty new and so I'm gonna call that good see that was a that was a colored rug and I don't think I've got any residue of the simple green still on there okay and I see more spots too on the carpet this this tan carpet picks up everything there's a spot there's a spot there's a spot you can see you can see where they're at see here's some here's discoloration something used to be right there on the floor I could get most of that out with my simple green here's a Here's another spot right there. See? But there's another one. I don't know how these got here. We even had a professional cleaner come in here and do some cleaning. And it didn't, that really didn't get up everything either. I wasn't too happy. 100% pleased about the outcome. There's another little spot right there. Yeah. So anyways, I, I'm going to take, on those spots, I'm going to take my simple green, put it on there, brush it in, and I'm going to do that like a pre-spotting prior to getting my carpet cleaner out. Okay. This stuff, that's just water right there. Right down in there that's dripped in there. But see, once that dries, that, that's going to be fine. That was just all those different little spots. See, here's some more spots. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. Sometimes when you think it's a spot, maybe it's something else. Get your vacuum cleaner out. Do a little bit of vacuuming first. There's a little bit there. Prior to going around, and I'll do some pre-spotting with my simple green and let it set in there for 15-20 minutes and then I'll take the the carpet cleaner on it and really that'll do a number on it because it'll suck it it'll suck up all the different residue residual of the 
the simple green. And that, you know, if you didn't have a carpet cleaner, a portable carpet cleaner, you can get this stuff. Get it all with your simple green. Try that out first. Do it in an inconspicuous spot somewhere around your bed, on the other side of the bed, over in a corner or whatever. And know that you really can't screw, I don't think you can screw up any carpet with, with Simple Green. I'm not an expert on that, but I've used Simple Green enough to know that even if you get some residual on there, you can rinse that out and get it out after it dries, okay? Well, that's all I have for this time, but I'll be back with more videos. And what am I going to talk about next time? Hmm. I think I know what it's going to be. And it's going to have to do with these switches right here in the wall. See there? There's two paddle switches. And this is the kitchen sink. And normally, and the reason why I'm going to do that, hear that? That's the garbage disposal switch. You can hear it. Can you hear it? It runs quite quite smooth and, and quiet. I like that. And I think it's because it's a nice, it's a nice encased one. And I don't know what size it is. It doesn't look that big. It's probably a three-quarter horse or something. They have half, uh, five-eighths, three-quarters, one, maybe even a little bit bigger than that with a housing, a shell that fits around it that quiets it down. But see, that switch there is for this light right up here. Okay, where is it? You can see it, can't you? Yeah, that light. Now, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do with this? Usually, what I like to see is having the garbage disposal switch the closest to your sink. So when you're doing, doing the dishes over here, let's see here. You're off here washing dishes, washing plates off, whatever. You just wanna reach over and hit this and have the garbage disposal work. You don't want to have to, I, I didn't have to slide over here and hit this. And I always got to remember, dabbity nabbit, how come the, the initial electrician did that? And I mean, over time, I'm sure I just have to reach further and hit this. It's no big deal. But because I know how to relocate electrical switches and plugs and stuff, I want to make a video of it in case you want to do the same thing or if you want to take a switch out to replace it you know okay what's back in there what do I have to do and all that I'm gonna make a video of that okay and I'll show you how to pull this the switches out it's very it's it's not gonna be that hard once I pull this out I know the the box is back behind the granite this is a granite backsplash so that granite backsplash is probably three quarters of an inch before the sheetrock and then I've got the box in there and it's a three gang box three gang meaning three different things in there if you only had two things it's a two gang or a single gang box this is a three gang box so I know I have all kinds of room back in there to rearrange stuff so so after I shut the power off I'm gonna pull these off flip-flop these I have to put this switch over here and move this one over there I don't even think I have to undo the wiring or anything hopefully the wiring's big enough so I can so I can pull these things out, remove them, and, and relocate, rearrange the wires so I can kind of bend and fold the wires back from this switch over this way and this one over here. I, I don't think I have to do anything else, but that remains to be seen. That's why you might want to watch that video.